So I have a couple of things to talk about today. We're going to first talk about the rich auntie movement. And then I am going to talk about the celibacy movement. Um, we have a whole lot of articles that are going on about the crisis of men. And this is how women are reacting and responding. But first, let's go to Rachel Cargill. She is the founder of Rich Auntie Supreme. And she says, this is what it means to live as one in this day and age. Yes, let's get into this article. Shayna Patton was 23 when she decided kids weren't for her. She made the decision to become a rich auntie long before it became an Instagram hashtag. Now 35, um, she's a travel agent based in Rochester, New York. She decided that kids weren't for her after watching a sibling's parenting journey. The opportunity for early re retirement and freedom took precedence for Patton. When I met my husband at age 20, I wanted seven or more kids, she tells Essence. My baby brother had his kids first and, when I, and then she saw him struggling with these. She was like, mm, that's not going to work for my retirement. So where does she go? Let's continue. Patton is one of the many 21st century women choosing not to have kids. A 2021 Pew Research survey found that 44% of adults between 18 and 49 without kids say they do not want to have kids. 44%. That's an increase of 7% from 2018. For anyone not aware of what a rich auntie is, it's a woman who chooses to live a child-free life. And no, this doesn't mean she's dysfunctional, less of a woman, or joyless. Research shows women without kids tend to be happier. They may also be richer too. The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis found that single women with no kids has $65,000 more in wealth in 2019 compared to child-free men at $57,000. Single mothers, on the other hand, had only $7,000 in wealth. And the disparity of races is definitely there with single mothers that are Black having even less wealth. So that's something to keep in mind. That said, being rich in this context isn't all about having more coins to yourself, but it's also about the sentimental riches that emanate from a woman's choice to be child-free. Choice is important. You guys know I've spoken about it. I am a mom and I'm a wife, but that was my choice. I am here for choices for women. I want us to live in the, in the lives that we choose. So that's important to me. It's an Instagram community that she founded in 2020 that now has 100,000 rich aunties or supporters. So look up Rich Auntie Supreme on Instagram. Let's support this lady and let's support this movement. Now for part two with the celibacy um, movement. All right, now let's jump into this article from last year. Um, why are more young women turning to celibacy? It's easier that way. This came out February of last year. All right, let's jump into this article. Gemma, 24, has recently turned to celibacy. Sometimes I've had sex I really didn't want. I just went along with it as I wanted to feel wanted rather than really liking the person I was with. I've just become so disillusioned with the whole culture of heterosexual dating. It's much easier this way. A growing number of young women like Gemma are rejecting sexual liberalism and embracing celibacy as said. Studies in recent years have reported young women trend towards being less sexually active, launching their sex lives later on, and having fewer sex partners than earlier generations. With the National Survey of Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyle um, reporting an overall decline in sexual behavior since lockdown. So all these men talking about body counts and um, 304s and stuff, they are not really looking at trends. But even before the pandemic, the cultural emphasis on sex and having it was radically shifting. While earlier iterations of feminist thinking celebrated female sexuality in all its forms, now more young women are questioning how patriarchy has shaped the dynamics of heterosexual culture and women's ability to exercise their full agency and power during sex. Critiquing heteronorm heteronormativity and patriarchal dating scripts is a central reasoning for many young women's turn to celibacy. The current nature of heteronormative dating means that it's enjoyed by men in positions of privilege and power who rarely have to acknowledge their faults or rectify the harm they cause. This makes it impossible to depoliticize the dating culture. Now, I do want to say that I um, am just reporting the celibacy thing, if you choose to do it, cool. I am not um, putting 
shame or judgment on women that choose to have sex. I just want to put that out there. This is just a trend and you can see this in the trend lines with the birth rates going down. So a lot of women are talking about celibacy and the birth rates are showing that sex is going down. Okay. In her 2021 book, Rachel Thompson asked, why is it that so many of us consent to sex we don't actually want? Uh, the solution, Thompson says, is a radical change in our sexual culture, now empowered by an influx of new theoretical and cultural ideas about what sex and se sexual ethics actually looks like. A wave of newly celibate women are igniting a global conversation about sex power and agency. While the law highlights that consent should not be obtained by coercion or manipulation, what should con um, constitute unacceptable levels of deception is both highly subjective and a task and an incredibly complex process to negotiate. This is a conversation that continues that we need to continue to have. So jump in the comments, like.